Welcome to this session of NetSuite Data Migration. We're so excited to be bringing this to you because we've done many NetSuite implementations and consulting projects, and we want to share the mistakes we've made so that you don't have to make it. So in this session, we're going to review why companies use NetSuite, the data migration process, give you an overview. It, that includes identifying the data to migrate, preparing the CSV files, uploading data in NetSuite, resolving issues, and the validation. So why do companies use NetSuite? Over the six or seven years that we've been doing this, NetSuite has continued to grow in popularity because it reduces the manual and spreadsheet-based processes that a lot of companies are using when they've outgrown QuickBooks. A lot of companies between QuickBooks, in the old days, it was between QuickBooks and then what's the next mid-tier system. And NetSuite is that mid-tier system before some companies jump into an Oracle or an SAP or even a Workday. They want real-time visibility to cash balances because you can upload it and connect it with banks fairly quickly. They also want a SaaS solution, software as a service. They don't want to have to set up their own servers in-house, worry about information security, load up the software, do the updates. They just want it available in the cloud, real-time access across the business, and it's 24-7 access from any browser. So you can be anywhere in the world, and it also helps with consolidation of multiple entities in different parts of the world. So that's why we've seen our clients pick NetSuite. So let's review the data migration process. There are five steps, identifying the data, preparing the CSV, uploading, resolving, and validating the data. And you'll repeat this process as necessary. And trust me, you will do, be doing a lot of repeating because we've done that. So the first step in the data migration process, ensure all data needed in the system is included in the upload file. That sounds very common sense. To ensure the accuracy and the completeness of the data migration, make sure the source data is complete and accurate. An example is if you're uploading employees, you want to include first name, last name, emails, social security numbers, addresses, anything that you want to run reports on, you need to load information in. Identify available fields to populate by creating a new manual entry in NetSuite. An example of this is try to create a new employee in NetSuite. It shows you the fields that you can populate. And if it, if it can be populated, most likely it can be uploaded. And uploading is the fastest way to get information into NetSuite. Identify the mandatory fields, which means fields that are required in the upload file. If you are not inputting the information in the mandatory fields, it will cause an error during the upload. If you're able to upload the data using a different module and the system requires a field to be mandatory, it will cause an error. So that's one of the typical errors that we find. And the mandatory fields are identified with an asterisk in NetSuite. Now also understand the type of data you're uploading and how NetSuite works for that section. Some data such as transactions for AP and AR require two files, a header and a line level file. You have to understand what type of data you're migrating and what the system requires and the sequence in order to get the data uploaded. And we'll review this with you in more detail. So the second part is to prepare the CSV file itself. And there's seven things that you want to remember in this. You create the CSV file, and because you're doing a quick upload, just add one or two records in the test upload. Creating a big test file that has lots of transactions, when you have an error, you're going to have to delete all of those. If you only have one or two records, it's easier to fix because you can just delete one or two of those line items. Ensure all data is accurate and complete when you're adding all the columns and the rows in the Excel file. This will save time if there's an error during upload. It's more difficult and time consuming to delete and fix than the original import. The third one is to delete all blank 
columns and rows after the last row or column of data. Even though the cells may look blank, they're actually not blank. An example is if you're using data in the columns and you just clear the content with the delete, um, just one by one deleting that content, Excel will recognize that information is still there. During the upload process, if these extra columns and rows are not deleted, NetSuite would think that these records aren't, aren't populated and it would cause you an error. Number four is if a file is using numbers, change the format to numbers in Excel. Meaning if you want to have the number 1200, don't write it 1000 or 1 comma 200. That would cause an error. NetSuite only reads 1200. Number five is to use the same fields in Excel as in NetSuite whenever possible. Using the same naming convention allows the system to automatically map your data fields. That will save you a lot of work. Number six is to check NetSuite for the list of records or formats for the upload. Check the format what NetSuite accepts to avoid errors. An example is a period could be um, March 2016, you actually have to format that as M-A-R space 2016. You don't want to do 3-2016 or 3-16. So making sure the number format is in the right way for NetSuite. And lastly, saving the file in Excel as a CSV file. NetSuite only accepts comma-separated values in the import tool. The third step is the actual upload into NetSuite. And here we have a couple of tips for you. The first one is to select the correct file to ensure it's accurate. It seems like a no-brainer again, but sometimes when there, you have so many files, you might click the wrong file and duplicate duplicate what you've just uploaded or you may skip a particular file and that causes problems when you're validating later on. Number two, uploading options that include add, update, or add or update. So in NetSuite there are three options that you can do to up upload your data. The first one is add which means you're adding new data. The second one is to update any new information that's already in NetSuite. Essentially, you're overriding information in NetSuite. And the third option is to add and update, new information and update. We've been told as, as we've done this is don't use that third option, add and update, because it's buggy in NetSuite and it will cause errors. And sometimes you may not be able to find which, if it's been updated or not, or if that data has been added or not. So avoid that third option. Number three is to, um, this part can be done really quickly if you map the correct fields to your CSV file. This would make more sense when we show you the NetSuite screen. And number four is to save the mapping so that can you, you can use it in future periods. So once you're able to successfully upload, save that mapping template so that in the future you can reuse it because you know it, it now works. So here's the NetSuite naming convention map that we were just talking to you about. So on the Left side is the mapping for your column headers in your Excel file, and the right side shows all the fields available in NetSuite. The middle is the mapping between NetSuite and Excel. If NetSuite finds errors before the upload, it'll show the errors when you click Next in the field mapping. If not, it will take you to the Save Mapping screen. Now, in order to map, you click a line in the middle column and choose a field from Excel, and you choose a NetSuite field, and we'll actually show you this in future examples and future training sessions. And in order, the order of the mapping doesn't matter. It doesn't have to be alphabetical. It doesn't have to be any particular sequence, as long as you fill in 
all of the fields that need to be uploaded. And then we go to resolving issues. Now that you've gotten there, there are three things to remember. You want to delete data that was found to be incorrect during the upload. In the previous steps, if you only uploaded one or two records to test, it'll be easy. But if you uploaded 100 records for your test and there's a problem with it, you actually have to go and delete all 100 transactions. You want to reload the data by following step one in the data migration process. And you want to review the NetSuite error log if the upload fails. Now NetSuite provides what the errors are for the records. And we're going to show you an example here. NetSuite only shows one error per record. If there are multiple errors, like the number format, the wrong subsidiary, the error would only show the number format. So you, can, you will see here the amounts in the journal entries must be balanced, and it tells you what the errors are. But if you have multiple errors, you only see that first error. You solve that, you try to reload, and you're going to get yet another error. So in this case, our debits and credits don't balance. We have 100,000 in our debits, but we only have 90,000 in our credits. And the final step is the data migration. Ensuring the upload data was entered in the correct field. There are two ways to do it. Uh, you can export the data into Excel and do a detail validation by comparing it to the detail file. And, or you could actually just look at the data in NetSuite itself. And if any of the data is incorrect, you have to delete those details and re-perform the steps to ensure accuracy. So that's it for the overview process. In future sessions, we'll go into more details and show you the demos within NetSuite itself. Have a great day. We'll talk to you soon.